few Christian nightclubs actually are born either as independent places that someone just uh, finds an empty storefront and opens up a, a Christian nightclub or convert a former Christian like coffee house into a nightclub. That doesn't that rarely happens. Most of the Christian nightclubs that I'm going to talk about today were actually reclaimed, reconverted former secular bars, right? P bars that used to serve uh, alcohol, that had smoking, that had, you know, scantily clad women occasionally, which we're going to see in a second. And that was actually the point of these spaces. One of the ways to for Christian businessmen to actually show that their place is fun and hip is taking over a formerly secular a nightlife spot. Um, as one of the nightclub owners that I talk about here, uh, or excuse me, not one of the nightclub owners, one of the people who used to tour nightclubs uh, acts, uh, said, like born-again Christians, the nightclubs that I go to, these Christian nightclubs, have undergone a conversion experience. Uh, for instance, Hal Rupert transforms a, har a former hard rock uh, discotheque space into a Christian nightclub called The Basement in Orange, California in 1976. The next year, Brian McLean is going to convert The Daisy, which is a very, very hip um, 1960s nightclub, a very for ritzy celebrities in the 1960s. You can see here, this is before its conversion on Rodeo Drive. It's a private nightclub. We know this because we have um, evidence of uh, their membership card showing us that's a private nightclub. He's going to turn this into a Christian nightclub, smack dad in the middle of Rodeo Drive, in the middle of Los Angeles. These are not nightclubs on the corner and the outskirts of the city where people have to trouble finding them. You can easily find a Christian nightlife spot. It's pretty prominent in major areas of the country country. 